So here we go. Um, again, for those, um, well, I think you both know me now, but um, my name is Jody Johnson. I am the District Tech Integration Specialist for Princeton. Um, I've been in this role for 16, for 16, <laughs> for six years. Prior to this, I was an elementary teacher. Um, the two years prior to coming into my, deck, my tech integration role, I was actually a third grade teacher. And that's when I discovered Seesaw. So I just came across it um, as a tech coach, got really excited about it. My kids were definitely my guinea pigs. So whenever I found something cool that I wanted to share with staff, um, they we checked it out. And so Seesaw was one of those things that we explored together. I got really excited about. Um, I became an ambassador mainly because I used it so much. And then as I went into the tech integration role, started sharing it with staff, um, we started using it in small pockets of our elementary buildings. And because of that, we eventually became a Seesaw for Schools district. So we use this in our preschool through fifth grade schools um, and we pay for it. So we have um, a full license. And since then I've become actually a Seesaw certified educator which basically means I've just been an ambassador for a long time. And so I've done a lot of Seesaw trainings. I attend a lot of their annual updated training and gone to some events. Um, I, it's just a great platform. I, I really enjoy it. So anytime I have a chance to present, I will usually present something about Seesaw to share. Um, so today what I wanted to do was just about rethinking newsletters because Seesaw has just such a great opportunity for us to rethink how we share information with parents in our district um we have asked that all of our k-12 or excuse me k-5 families and and parents and teachers use seesaw as their main form of communication and the biggest reason for that is really so that we only have one form or one kind of mode of communication that parents have to worry about checking into so instead of, okay, well, this teacher does email and this teacher does Seesaw and this teacher does Class Dojo and this teacher uses Skyward and, you know, it can get to be a lot. And most of our families have multiple kids in multiple buildings. And so we've really tried to streamline communication. So we ask for Seesaw K-5 and Schoology is 612. And so with that, trying to figure out, well, now how do I do newsletters? Maybe I've always done them in paper and how, or I've always done them, you know, I've always sent out a big email. <laughs> how can we do that in Seesaw using some of those tools? So that's what we're going to look at today. So maybe kind of a, a traditional newsletter you may have done before. This isn't mine. This is actually um, one of the Seesaw um team members if we call her uh angela seesaw <laughs> this is her original like her her newsletter from like 2013 and i just giggle because this looked a lot like mine back in that time like this is how i would write newsletters like okay you need to know every single thing we did in class every book we read all the information because i had to be a good teacher right i had to tell my parents everything we were doing in class so that they would know what's happening with their student here's here's some notes about that like there's a lot of print there's a lot of content how much time did i spend doing this a lot i mean it was usually i would it, this is what i would do my prep on friday was it would be doing the newsletter or the night before um, I don't know who read it or how how would I know if they read it? Well, the, I would know if I did something wrong. So if I misspelled something or I put some wrong information in or if there was something exciting in there, but I really never knew if they read it. And there wasn't always pictures in there or if they were, they were kind of pasted in kind of weird and small. And then the families couldn't always do much with them because it was usually a piece of paper that I sent home. We're going to talk about how to get some of that time back. So again, like I said, usually about an hour of my time because it was kind of my prep time, usually the night before. Sometimes I would just keep my newsletter like saved in, like saved on my computer and I would work on it all week and then get it ready to go during my prep time on that last day and get it ready to send out. Sometimes I'd be working on it during class while the kids were 
working on something and then I'd rush down and copy it off even though we weren't supposed to do that because you weren't supposed to make more than like 20 copies. So what I really like about Seesaw is just that that opportunity to get things back. Most of our families are connected. When they're connected, they can see what you send out through Seesaw either on their computer or on their phone. They're able to connect anywhere. So that's another reason why we chose this is because it's device agnostic. It works on Android, it works on Mac, it works on every type of phone, it works on every type of browser. So it doesn't matter what the family has, they're able to connect to Seesaw. And that is really an equity piece that was important to us, that we were able to provide something that all parents could connect to. Simple idea to get started is creating an audio message. So this idea right here is putting on just a message to your family. So this is actually kind of a back to school message that would go out to both your families and your students. You could even do this during break to say, you know, I'm thinking of you during break, can't wait to have you back, where maybe you add a bit emoji or a picture of yourself, a couple quick notes, but then you record yourself talking so that they can just hear your voice mm -hmm. and listen instead of having to read any information cuts way down on any typing that you have to do um, is fun. It's a lot easier to read. It's a lot more interactive for the families and it's a little more engaging. When you look at this versus this, you can see which one might be a little more exciting, even though it could be covering the same information. So, this is what it looks like on the teacher and the student side when they're in Seesaw. If you were to create a message like this, this is what it looks like to the family. So if they're on their phone, they will see this little message here and they will see a cute little speaker icon that tells them they can just push that and they'll be able to listen to the message. So I'm actually going to show you this in Seesaw. And this one that I created was actually in the journal. So this wasn't, it was more like an assignment. So my trick there to find that is I clicked on one student. So I could just look at just the posts for that have been sent to that kid. Because if I had scrolled through everything, I would have looked at every post for every student. Um, so here's that post right here. I just did it as a post that went out to everyone in the class. You can see that I added just some text here with some emojis, some text over here, and then I have the voiceover right here. Welcome to Ms. Johnson's class. I am so excited you are here this year. We are going to learn so much this year about. So to make something like that, pretty quick and easy. So this is just doing a post to student work, going into the drawing. I changed the background. So all of this, I'm not leaving Seesaw at all. I'm staying right inside of Seesaw. What I am going to do is upload a picture. So my magic three dots, that's what I call them. Um, I'm going to go here. Actually, I'm going to go to my camera and I'm going to upload. Because I'm that person, I have a folder of Bitmojis on my computer. And then I'm just going to add some text. Anything that I want to share with my students, and then I can move these all around. Um, if you haven't done a lot with this yourself, anytime you add text or an image, you get these magic three dots again. You can click on these. You have a couple of things you can do. You can change the style, so different fonts. You can change how, if it is filled in the box, or if it is just outlined, or if it's completely filled in with that negative space. You can change if it's centered or right or left justified. You can also bring it to the front. So if it's on top of a picture, you can put it behind or in front of a picture. You can also lock it so that if a student goes on here, they can't move it around. But what's really neat is you can add your voice. So you can put any image on here and you can add your voice to it. So I could go over here and say, I wanna add my voice to this picture. I can upload audio, so maybe I have a song that I wanna upload, but I could also just record my voice talking to my students. So this is where they could get their directions for the day. 
I've seen a lot of teachers do this as a way to give directions for an assignment or just to talk to families about their day and about what happened in class. So record your voice, you just click on it, it starts recording. So I'm gonna click out of there. Once you're done with all that, you can click the check mark, make sure it's assigned to all of your students. And then both your students and your parents will see that because the parents are going to see it when they log in to the journal. They're gonna see it here as one of the journal assignments. And then they're also going to see, um, the students will see it as one of their journal, like as on their feed, kind of like their Facebook feed. So that's one way to communicate with your families. One other really important thing I wanted to point out, we talked about this at the beginning, is not knowing who read your work, right? We don't know which parents have seen your newsletter, actually read it. In Seesaw, you do. Every time someone looks at or opens your um, journal, you will get a message down here that says seen by. So you will notice when you have um, put out a message or you have a post on here that your all your parents' names will start getting listed down here, which is really nice. And another good benefit to using this for your newsletters. All right, so let's look at another option. So because we can't really have our parents in the classroom, I really love this idea. Um, one, so Angela Cesar, who um, I kind of took some of these ideas from, she actually had a video of her classroom. And so instead of doing a newsletter of, okay, this week we read this book, we did this activity, she stood in her classroom, showed different parts of the classroom for that week and talked to the parents about what they did. And it was only like a two minute video. So instead of having to read a whole lot of information, they just watched a quick video could do the same thing here. So I took a bunch of pictures from homecoming week last week, recorded quickly what we learned, what were the highlights, obviously because it was homecoming, that was a big highlight to our week, and then just summed up our week for families. So again, no paper had to go home. They got a quick summary of all the important stuff and they got to see some really cute pictures of their kids, which is really what parents are super excited about. Now this is an actual message so this is what it will look like to the families. It will come in as a message to them. If you're not familiar with Seesaw messaging, as soon as you start messaging families, they can now message you, but they can't message you until you message them first. So this is what it looks like to them. They're gonna go into the inbox and they will see that they have a message here with a play button and they can listen to that message they can also respond right back to the teacher. The great thing about that is it's a private communication. So when they respond back, the whole class is not gonna see that, just the teacher and the parent. If there's multiple parents or multiple family members connected, it doesn't show to all of them, it's just going to show to the person who's having that conversation. So that is a really quick and easy way to do a newsletter. Really no typing, throw in some pictures and record yourself. And then again, you will actually get on here. So when you go in as a teacher into your inbox, you will see everyone who's read your message. So you will actually see down here, um, sorry, right over here, who has seen this message. So you'll get a list of all the parents. So it's a good way to reach out and say, who hasn't looked at your messages, who has looked at your messages. Another option for messaging is to just use the notes app or the notes tool. It just looks like a piece of notebook paper. You can add emojis to kind of make it stick out. So if you don't know how to use an emoji keyboard, if you're on a Mac, if you hit control, command and spacebar, your emoji keyboard will pop up. If you're on a if you're on a PC and you hit the Windows key and period at the same time. A emojis window should pop up for you. So I'm going to show you what this looks like. So if you go into your Seesaw, go to your inbox and go to create an, an announcement for your families. What we're going to do is when we go to send an announcement, we're going to turn it into that notebook. And how we do that is we click on add attachment. And when we get, when we click on add attachment, it brings us up the six tools. So the six tools are what students always have available to them. And I'm just going to click on note. And now I have this notebook paper that I can write on. 
So I can go ahead and open up my emoji keyboard and then we can write our notes, write reminders, whatever we need. Click the check mark. If I want, I can also record myself. So I could record some, you know, a quick message to the families as well. When I'm ready, I can click the check mark again. Decide who I'm sending this to. So am I sending it to all my students or just my family members? I can also add any more information. So make sure to read the announcements and then send it. And that's it. I just sent an announcement to all my families. So for the families, they get to, you know, it's kind of nice to have that quick little communication for them. This is an example of one I did. So just quick, quick notes. Remember your gym shoes, library books are due, persuasive essay is due. And just threw in those emojis to let them know what was coming up. I really liked this idea of just having multiple things to add and a really easy way to do it. So um, this was kind of the thought of how many things do we put in that take home folder and how many of them come back to school and probably never get looked at, but we really want parents to look at them, right? So this is kind of class and school news. And the way I did this is I went on our website and I went to the different schools um, news. So like on our ISD 477 website, we have kind of a scrolling news and information. And I pulled off information that was important there. So I'm going to go into my announcements here. And, and what all I did was do a screenshot. And so what I created was a multi-page message for my families. And every page has a different note on it from the school. So instead of sending home all those flyers worth of paper, I just put them on multiple pages in a message. You can do up to 20 pages to send home. And that's all I needed to send home. And if you have all of your families connected and you're able to see that every week they read every message, it's not a really bad way to do it. We are going to click on send announcement and click add attachment. And then we're gonna go to the drawing board. This is what I like to call the canvas. It's kind of your starting spot. And then you are just going to upload anything that you need to share with your families. So that's easy to do by going to the camera and upload. And so here I have just a bunch of screenshots of information that I wanna share. I get down here, I know they're on here. So this one is like the Scholastic News. And so it comes in a little big. I'm gonna move this so it's just a little bit smaller, easier to read on the eyes. If I want, I can even color the background by going to that background dot. We're kind of running out of time, so I'm gonna skip that. But then over here, right down here on the bottom here, I'm gonna click Add Page. And now I'm going to go back to my camera. I'm gonna do Upload. And I know I had another message here that I wanted to add. Oh yeah, it was about that pumpkin chunkin that's coming up because that's really cool. So I want to make sure I add that. I'm going to add a page. And then there was one more message that I want to make sure all of our family saw this week. And that was about Mrs. Pollard's class. And I could keep going. I could keep adding messages. That's probably more than enough for right now. And then this could really be your weekly school and classroom news because it has all those things included right in there and send it out. When the families get it, what they will get is a message that looks exactly like this, that has the lines on each side or the arrows where they can just easily click through each thing to read it. Um, one thing that's really important to know is that if you're using notes, they can be translated. So when families sign up for Seesaw, they put in their home language up to 55 languages will be automatically translated for families. And that is when they look at notes, when they look at captions, comments, or announcements. So no matter what language you write it in, when they open it up in their app, it'll automatically be translated for them. So you don't have to do anything for that. Awesome feature for our families. And then just some last things to think about is have your students take ownership of sharing. This is their classroom. This is their year. This is their learning. When I go in and kind of onboard 
classes onto Seesaw. We talk about how this is their journal for the year and they're going to, you know, share with their families what they learned about. So think of ways that they can really demonstrate their learning and their pride in their classroom. So a mini newscast where they turn on the camera. The camera can only go for five minutes, so they can't go too long, which is nice. Um, chatter picks, if you've never used chatter picks on an iPad, where it just has a picture, you draw a line over the mouth, and then you record your mouth, and it, or you record your voice, and it looks like it's talking, so it looks like a bird is talking, or a looks like the Statue of Liberty is talking. <laughs> That's fun. Um, you want to get really fancy, do a green screen and put the kids in a different location. Adding those voices to pictures for kids who don't want to be on camera, and that starts young. I mean, there are kindergartners who don't want to be on camera. Having them put a picture on the screen and then just tapping and recording their voice is a great idea. Or creating their own book. Maybe they want to do a book of their week or a book of their month. Um, exactly what we just did, where we do those multiple pages, let them do something on every page, something about them, and share that out. Whew, that was fast. <laughs> so please contact me. I love to talk about CESA. I love to come out and help. I am more than willing to do um, a presentation or just chat with you. So um, I'm going to share the resources with Jeremy here, who's going to share out the presentation and the video. Um, Welcome to email me. I'm on Twitter. I'm really bad about checking it. So it's probably best to email me. Um, and then I just linked in two great links here, one on translation resources, and then this great resources for teachers on how to um, just do just about everything on Seesaw. So you guys have any questions before we go? I do have a question. Yeah. So you said that notes can also be translated. So if I uh, write down, if I type something in Spanish, they, so that's okay. They are going to read it in English. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It, it will translate to whatever their home language is. So yeah, you should be and fine. I, and I don't have to do anything. I just have to yeah. type. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about it that way. That's even, yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I had a question as well. I yeah. haven't used the announcements tab very much. I've mostly just used the student work tab because I've always been concerned, like, does it go to a different spot for families? I want to make sure they're able to see it. Is it something yeah. that it goes, they get the same notification? What's the benefit of do, doing posting the student work? Because it seems like you can post similar items in both spots. You can. So the biggest difference between doing the inbox and the student work is really just kind of the feed. So if they have, um, well, and I guess the inbox allows them that they can then communicate with you individually, right? Like if you put it in the inbox, they can kind of start a conversation with you. Oh, oh yes. I see now what you mean there with the announcement sends it out as a DM. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. See. Yep. And then the, the, this is more of like, it's their feed. I always think of it as like a Facebook feed of all of their stuff. So they kind of have to dig through it, but it really depends on how you use it. Like if you do tons of activities, there's lots of stuff to see here. So then it's really nice to use the inbox as just like, these are our announcements. Like these are just the, the information I want you to have just for today type thing. Um, gotcha. Yeah, one other thing, and I don't know if you know this, but in when you're in your class, you can pin stuff to the very top. So if you have like one special announcement that you need for that day or for that you just want parents to make sure they see, you can, there's three dots on every post. You can say pin to the top. So like when we did distance learning, parents would send that out through the inbox, but they would also pin it to the top of the journal so that when parents help their kids log in, they would see it first. Um, so that's just another thing to remember. Well, thank you for joining. I hope you have a good rest of your day.